Okay, so in this video we're going to see some of the updates in the new version, uh, in the latest versions of X-Ray about shared reflections and the ways that we can use to save time when making reflections. And also we are going to look at a technique that we can use to achieve a mirror-like reflection like this one that we have here or uh, the reflections let me like these okay so let's just start with this scene so here we have uh, four spheres and this is the default behavior of x-ray when it comes to reflections it is going to bake every single uh, one of these objects and it is going to move the reflection actor in the middle of that object and then bake the reflection it is going to bake once for uh, objects that doesn't have roughness right, like this one or this one and it is going to bake two reflections for any object with a rough map like these two in the middle so overall in this scene we are going to have around uh, eight reflection bills uh, and as you can see the reflection is actually very accurate we have this sphere cast it over here and uh, this one we have these two spheres cast it in this uh, object and same goes for these two so no no object here and we have this sphere cast it right here so a new option that we have in uh, the latest version of x-ray is for objects with a rough map so if I uncheck this bake reflection per material and let's say if I assign a rough map to all of these so let's assign a checker here and a checker here I'm going to update shader so uh, for these if I uh, bake the reflection now it only baked it twice uh, just like uh, if it is baked only one object with a rough map and if you look the reflection result let's use this you can see that the reflection of this object is right and if I check this one it is the exact reflection as uh, this last object so it is going to just bake uh, the reflection for one of these objects and then just share it on all the other uh, objects in the scene and this option is uh, of course per reflection actor so if another object has a, another reflection actor uh, that the options on the reflection actor may override these settings so uh, what if to, uh, we don't have rough map on, a, on one of these objects so uh, let's say this one doesn't have a, uh, any rough map. Uh, in this case, it is going to bake uh, two reflection actors for all the objects with a rough map, and then it is going to uh, get to any other object uh, without a rough map and bake the exact reflection for those objects. So, for example, if I select all of these and bake reflection. can see that it baked it three time and now uh, this object has a very accurate reflection and these other ones are just shared the same reflection this is uh, this is going to give you a very nice accuracy if you want to uh, have a very uh, exact roughness that you defined here for these objects but uh, if you are working on a scene with a lot of objects and the accuracy of those reflections aren't that important to you and you don't use rough map, uh, it is still is going to bake a lot of reflections. So in that case, uh, what you can do is uh, enable shared reflection on your reflection actor. So all of these uh, objects here are using this reflection actor. I'm going to select the reflection actor, add attribute, shared reflection and if i look here we have a shared reflection uh, attribute 
on this channel box. And when this is enabled, if I, let's say, move the reflection actor over here, I'm going to disable auto move uh, reflection actor, so it is going to just pick it in this place. And now if I uh, build a reflection, it is going to just build it once for all of these. Like that. And you can see that it is now uh, having the same map on all of them. And this can save you a lot of time on uh, crowded scenes with many objects. So now let's get to the planar reflections, uh, like the one we have here. And as you know, X-Ray is not capable of uh, creating planar reflections at the moment. But what we can do is uh, use the shared maps and shared SSS uh, map and just use a copy of this object under the surface that we want. And because we use the shared maps, it is not going to get baked uh, again, uh, but still it is going to uh, make the scene a little bit heavy. So it is the same in here as well. So if I go into the mirror, this one, you can see that it is just an uh, exact room in the other side of the mirror. But uh, because I used the shared maps, just select the objects on the reflection, and then the one in the original uh, room, and use the shared light map and shared SSS. Uh, I have another video for that, you can check that out. And it is going to lock these uh, objects built uh, by default, so they are not going to get baked again. But if you make any changes to these objects, uh, the reflection will also get updated, which is uh, very good. So for example, if I change the light that we have here, you can see that it also changes on the reflection. Or if I enable it and just change the color, it is going to uh, be the same on both the room, both of the rooms. And this is a very uh, good solution for the moment that we don't have a very good planar reflection. And uh, if uh, for other cases, for example, the grounds, if you have a rough uh, ground like this one, uh, you probably don't need to use uh, these techniques. Just a regular uh, reflection actor may, uh, may be just fine. But when you have a mirror like this one, there's nothing you can do. You have to use a uh, a technique like this. Okay, so now let's say if I want to have the reflection like that uh, in this scene. Uh, I think the current reflection is actually very good for the floor, but uh, let's say it's important for me to have the reflection of this table on the ground. So all I need to do is just duplicate it and this is our duplicate because I have uh, set a hotkey for uh, duplicate with light map. It also gets duplicated with the light map here. But uh, if I bake it now, it is going to get baked separately. So uh, to avoid that, I'm going to use shared maps. First, select the uh, copy and then the original table, share maps, and share light map. And now they are using the same light map for both of them. So now let's just move it here. Let's freeze the transform and then just flip it from this axis. It is going to look like this. Now uh, we're going to uh, just make the floor a little bit transparent. And when you do that, you're going to see everything under this uh, area. So uh, before that, I'm going to create a box, a black box, pretty much exactly as the one that we have right now. Uh, let's just remove the top and reverse it. Like this. Okay. So now, just lower the opacity, update the shader, and you can see that we we can see the table 
uh, into reflection. You can also assign a map to this opacity. For example, I can use the rough map and use it as opacity. Let's create a remap. Yeah. And now we can have a control like this to have reflection only on uh, certain areas. Yes, and in many cases you don't really need to have the whole room uh, copied, just having a few objects uh, can give the illusion of a real reflection to a viewer. And uh, let me show something else as well. Um, so uh, you can also uh, do some tricks to uh, fade this reflection a little bit. So if I create another box or maybe a sphere like this, put it inside this object and then just uh, let's assign a new material and for the transparency I'm going to connect a ramp like this. So you don't see the full reflection. And because of the transparency sorting, you can see that it looks very bad at the moment. Just go to our viewport option and change the transparency algorithm. So I'm going to do something like that. like that, we need to move it down yeah, like that so now you only see a little bit of the reflection and and not the rest of it. Let's freeze the transform and just flip it down. Now select the reflection and then the original mesh shared light map. Just like that. Okay, so that is pretty much it.